Yeah, there's this whole business beef around the TV show that, you know, you don't really hear talked about. So you I recorded make this, my- this entire, like, side story that's becoming a main story drama behind whether Demetrius cooperated, how he cooperated allegedly, the stuff, how it plays in to the TV and film rights. I mean, this by itself is a movie. <laughs> Well, it, it kind of um, goes to one in doing work in all these years and studying uh, people convicted of being, you know, very large scale criminals. One of the kind of surprising things I learned, maybe it shouldn't be surprising in retrospect, tremendous amount of narcissism. So yeah. certainly there's there's people that have less opportunities in life and try to commit a crime. But like. Really, once you have, I mean, if you can make a million dollars illegally and not be caught, you know, you're way in the 99.9th percentile. And people, whether it's skinny Joey Merlino or many, many bank robbers or, you know, Big Meech or many people, you know, to keep on in a lifestyle where you're freedom for long periods is at risk on a moment to moment basis, especially drug dealing where, you know, even if you get away with a drug deal, there could always be a conspiracy case looming. It's, 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 a, those people have a very different psychology than even yeah. most people that think of themselves as criminals. So in a nutshell and correct, and then you can expound upon it. Uh, uh, Mr. Gatling, uh, he's Duran, right? Yeah, De- Deani Cuffy Gatling. Oh, it's De- Deani. Okay, and um, he was working a deal for a BMF show years ago. Him and yeah, back in right when he got locked up then, in like oh eight oh nine. Okay, and then as that petered out, Meech, like most people are doing on prison terms, do you got to? Find people in the free world that'll do stuff for you. It doesn't have to be criminal. It could just be people who are going to go check on your mom or it could be criminal. You know, I mean, you're sitting there in prison. You're trying to kill time. You're trying to feel connected to the world. And he meets this Tammy Cowan's uh, well, woman now. Blue Da Vinci, the- Blue da Vinci yeah, said he's the one who introduced Tammy Cowan's to me yeah. once he was already in prison. I don't right. know if she's a criminal groupie or she saw an opportunity to make money or a little bit of both or just one of those women who likes excitement because, yeah, of let's course. Make, let's make sure we get the timeline straight. Like, th- she didn't come into the picture once it petered out. She was in the picture from almost day one when he got in. Okay, but did he meet her through Blue Da Vinci? Like he Blue met, said? from what I understand, Blue dated her at a, at a certain point. Demetrius knew of her but did not know her wasn't and what did she do for a live like what what was i don't know what i know is i bet you she did real estate in in around 2007 when demetrius was uh copping his plea between six and seven when he was uh in in michigan first in the federal detention and then and they had him in like uh county jail out in like Port Huron or something. Uh, He was introduced to Tammy and within like less than a year she was given his uh, power of attorney. She was named CEO of of, uh, Black Mafia Family Entertainment uh, and became his... And that was her and Meech's business. Well, it was Meech's business. He had that incorporated before he got locked up. And then, of course, you know, that Dexter Salsa right. Hussey, a bunch of people like filed brand marks because yeah, I guess they thought that, ta- that means Tony- something legally, which it doesn't yeah. really. Including t- uh, Terry's girl, Tonisha Welch's son, who also has the a, a BMF. Quick, quick, quick legal uh, uh, lesson. Just because you file some name somewhere doesn't mean you own anything. And then another thing I've found out uh, in in this crazy world of trademarking and copywriting, you can not own a trademark, but if you're using it, 
You can like legally squat on it. Yeah, but you got to be using it. Right, you have to be using it. So then, you then you're not it. squatting. Like if I never put anything out with American dope all over it, you can't sue somebody. So you no, got to no. use it. You need so to like, use it. I got so many prop t-shirt American dope. Yeah. You can't take it, but you can't just, oh, one day BMF will be a movie. I'm going to register. First of all, it's a criminal entity. I yeah. don't, it's like me or you registering the Gambino crime family and saying, oh, John Gotti's son can't make a movie. Yeah. We own the copyright. It's kind of, it's kind of crazy. It's like insane. Yeah. Let, let me just, I want to give, give like three quick takeaways and then we'll dive in. But I just like kind of like the, the opening remarks here. There, there are kind of three things that I feel are most important when talking about this situation. First is, well, th this is kind of like, let's say the forward to the three. Everybody cooperates 99.9%. .9 I mean, like people that you can't imagine cooperating are cooperating in some form or the other. Well, so yeah, we've been so be dead off the shock. record about all kind of people just because there's no record right. of it in the right. system. I don't know right. why people think, and then now there's this new thing on the like crime YouTube streets of like, well, show your paperwork as if there's a piece yeah. of paper right. that someone gives you that says, this not, man is not a snitch. It's not a cooperative. It's like, okay. Uh, and then I want to be clear, because I think this is really getting conflated in a lot of uh, the, the scuttlebutt and the rumor mill. Whether or not Demetrius cooperated, tried to cooperate, was successful, semi-successful, unsuccessful. I think there are people out there that, that are of the opinion, and part of this is because Cuffy is kind of creating this narrative that's <laughs> that, that Cuffy is in jail and serving 30 years because of something Meech did. And that's not 100% true. It's not even maybe 50% true. Cuffy's serving two murder sentences that had nothing to do with Demetrius. There's no allegations that Demetrius helped them solve those two murder investigations. And the cooperation, the alleged, I should say, the alleged cooperation from Demetrius, 90% of it was thrown out of court. Which is now, why, but, which is but why was he it even out early. You hear me? And then one of them went wrong. That doesn't really mean Meech purpose because they did supposedly did some successful drug deals, right? No, no, I, we we can. I'll back it up, and I'll we'll give you the blow by blow. And there's a lot of smoke here, and frankly, there's kind of two pieces of a, at least partially a smoking gun. Um, but those are the only. Are you on your Are are you on Wi-Fi? Are you plugged in? Because you're I'm very jerky. In. I mean, I hear your audio, but like. Are you are you hard plugged in? Yeah. I mean, do you have your 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 Kate your line from the cable box into your phone? Yeah. I mean, into yeah. your computer. Yeah, right now. I okay. You're, okay. Oh, good. Okay, leave it like that. That's okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, we can get into that, but really, the only two pieces of what you would might consider a smoking gun is one uh, recorded prison conversation between Tammy. And Demetrius, where Demetrius doesn't appear to be shocked by Tammy telling him that she got outed as a cooperator. And Demetrius seems more worried about just keep my name out of it as opposed to being like, oh, wow, you've been informing this whole time. It seems like he knew about it. And then the other quote unquote smoking gun would be there was testimony at an evidentiary hearing by a disgraced but at one point decorated DEA agent that says he or that said under oath 
that he had conversations with Demetrius in prison about cooperating and Demetrius provided that cooperation, didn't want his name in the paperwork. He, he, uh, this Keith Cromer told Demetrius, your name won't be in the paperwork as long as Cuffy doesn't go to trial and Cuffy's not going to go to trial because we've got too much evidence on him. So you have two. And, and this would have, this would have happened. What? Somewhat. Okay, so let's, well, go, let's go to the start. Let's, let's start from the beginning. Into a sentence. Yeah. Let me, let me start from the beginning. And then my, my final takeaway will segue into the, the whole story is again, regardless of his cooperation or not, we have paperwork and court filings that prove that when Demetrius went to prison in 2005, he did not start wholesale drug trafficking, and he was wholesale drug trafficking well into the 2010s, into so, 2014 and 15. Didn't he, didn't he meet a new guy in the Wayne yes. County Jail? Right? Exactly, and this is what plays in where the he whole... was being treated like a celebrity by the guards. Right. So who was this? Story. Who was this guy? Who was this guy? Because that guy beat the the Hispanic guy beat two conspiracy cases in okay. Detroit already. No, he no, he beat them after that. Okay, but they were in Detroit. They were out of Detroit. Who were they? So Demetrius with? is locked. Some... So Demetrius is locked up, and he meets a guy named Fidel Suarez. And Fidel sounds like Suarez. a made up. Like, like a name from a, a TV show. Yeah, and Fidel Suarez is a Mexican cartel connected to the cartels, living in uh, California in the Los Angeles area, owns a trucking company, and uses the trucks to transport kilos of cocaine around the country. So he, him so he got caught in a, in, a, in a Detroit case. Yes, and him and Demetrius get meet in like 06. And he gets out in 07. And when he gets out in 07, Demetrius starts using him to hook up with people that he knows on the street that are looking to get fed uh, bricks and, and brokers deals and takes uh, a commission from, from uh, said deals um, through Suarez. Suarez then takes another case. Suarez beat two cases. when So one, he meets Demetrius when they're both locked up waiting to trial. Demetrius cops. Suarez beats the case and gets out, goes outside, but then and and does work with Demetrius. But then Suarez takes another case and is back in detention in, in federal uh, uh, with the feds in Detroit and is is uh, hemmed up between like two thousand nine and um, like eleven, I think. Uh boy, I mean, not many people beat federal conspiracy cases, right, which makes you start questioning. Beat. He beats yeah. two, so right. was he cooperate? Was he I, that's like what I, I don't want to put it. Mr. Suarez, I'm not, you know, I, it just makes me wonder. Uh, it's very rare. But uh, so around this time, Demetrius is doing whatever he's doing, and he's got Tammy Cowens now as his right hand, uh, his CEO. She has his power of attorney, so she can sign things for him, sign his name. And... She is looking to shop his television and film rights. Cuffy Gatling, who was at that point the boss of what was left of the St. Louis BMF crew. Um, the St. Louis crew was the first real BMF group to be busted. They, came, they got uh, taken down about a year before the Operation Motor City Mafia case hit. And Cuffy's younger brother, uh, Duran Wani, or magic, it was known as Magic, who magic tragically or died of an asthma attack in prison. Yeah, in prison, right. And Wani and Cuffy, or Magic and Cuffy, meet Demetrius in 1990. I mean, early in in Demetrius's rise. And when and when, just for clarification, like I just did a a long overview of all the cases in different cities. But you know, once the feds are like anybody else, like if something like BMF hits the public radar and gets this reputation, it might be convenient for them to throw it around in a lot of cases. But like in the drug world, you know, like you're, you're okay, you're in St. Louis and maybe you get drugs from Big Meech or whatever right. sometimes. Not, but like you're getting drugs from, from all kinds of people. Yeah. 
it, it, it's not as what does it mean to say like St. Louis BMF? I mean, is that just some guys they knew? Is it people they did stuff with sometimes? I mean, it's not, it wasn't like a, a mafia well, family they, where they, they were don't. reporting to Big Meech. Right. That's true. Uh, but they there was a group that was at the very least, if it wasn't a part of BMF, it was BMF adjacent, um, sh- you know, sharing uh, plugs and whatnot. Cuffy and Wani were were there from kind of day one. Uh, they they were the uh, along with Jabo, Chad Brown, um, were the original kind of St. Louis guys that were in the Flannery Brothers circle. Uh, Cuffy went to prison for ten years on a cocaine case between 93 and 03. So he comes home right when his brother is about to go down. And he was actually present at uh, this. We could do a whole other episode on what happened when they, when they arrested uh, magic, you know, there was a oh, shootout. Yeah. And Jerry Davis said he called Jerry day. Like, yeah. yeah. J rock uh, allegedly, uh, took a team of his Sin City Mafia guys and started shooting it but, out. With but the, no, what they did. The thing about that is, though, I was if the if the feds were so sure, they would have gladly charged yeah. them with it. They, so. they, what they had was a, a cell phone ping, um, but obviously it didn't go. It didn't There's go any some further. Some so-called they, shots, but nobody was shot. So right, but there was gunfire exchanged. Exchanged. Um, they the the gunfire when. When Magic and his girlfriend were being carried, or not carried, taken out in handcuffs, uh, bullets flew in their direction, and then members of the DA shot back. It wasn't, nobody got hurt. It wasn't a, oh, a there shootout. Were, oh, I, the thought, I thought maybe they just there were shot. Oh, the Fed shot back. The sh- Fed shot back because someone was shooting at, I mean, like, Mag- Mag- or Magic's girlfriend told me that you know, she she saw a bullet fly by her head. Oh, bro, that Brandy. Yeah, Brandy, because it happened at Brandy's house. Oh, oh, you talked to her. Yeah, yeah. The the arrest, because because uh, she, she did a flag. She did a flag. Boy, yeah. One thing just for everybody listening and thinks they're interested in selling drugs, like you know, you hear these amounts of money and you see stuff and it sounds fun, but like very brief periods of time, most of these people are free. Or and, making and Brandy money. had to do Brandy had to do like eight years. And her father like died in custody or something. Yeah. You know, she, so you, she you, knew you a make lot of the money for two, three years. That's why BMF was interesting. It had such a long run, but even them, okay, you made money for 14, 16 yeah. years. It's already been 16 years since they went to jail. So uh yeah, so that that was a crazy situation. Anyway, uh magic goes. To prison in early 05 and Cuffy kind of takes control of what is whatever organization is in St. Louis and uh, has a you know through according to the court records you know has there's roughly a, a dozen to two dozen people um working in concert and uh at some point Demetrius I don't know exactly what date or year but before 2010 i would say before 2009 demetrius is having suarez um uh give kilos to 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 the st louis i guys. swear to god okay. fidel suarez sounds like if yeah. someone was writing a show or if some yeah. like White people from Utah were making up the name of a drug dealer. And the same time, Cuffy has disposable (laughs) income, and he gives, allegedly, like a quarter million dollars uh, to Tammy and Demetrius for... Oh, he buys the rights. Yeah, he he had the rights for uh, a couple years. So, and, oh, wait a second. So that's pretty. So, all right. Re- well, one thing I'll say for, you know, big drug dealers are entrepreneurial and they see business opportunities. So immediately, Cuffy is like, oh, shit, this should be a movie. Yeah. But, the, but according to his convictions, he's already, he's doing stuff while right. 
And Meech is doing stuff. Right. And Demetrius is helping Cuffy deal drugs. Uh, so they're, they're shocking. And, and again, this, isn't, this is from court. This is you just yeah. repeating right. stuff. So, this is all in court records. And, and so what, I, what I find most, and one of the, one of the biggest takeaways from this is that if you knew what you were looking for and you were paying attention, you could have known this all eight years ago. This was all mm. in court records in 2015. Well, no, nobody wanted to know. The, the, right. It's uh, the the legend is, I guess, valuable to a lot of people. I talk about with guys all the time about the amount of people that have BMF tattooed on them yeah. that didn't know anybody who knew someone who knew someone who was in BMF. But there, there was also a massive, and I, I guess, I, you know, I'm indicting myself as someone who reports on, on BMF, but there was a massive overlooking of court hearings that were taking place in 2018, not that long well, ago. Well, so, so much. And then by 2018, everyone was interested in the show. And yeah, you know, anyway, we'll get, I'll get to that in a second. But uh, so Cuffy puts down a quarter million dollars and actually finds some level of traction. And this had nothing to do at this point. This had nothing to do with a TV show. This was oh, because me sold the rights several times. Yeah, but in this case, they're trying to get a movie, not a TV show. They're trying. Was to that the one that Terrence Howard was going to be? It might have been, but I know that it was Lionsgate Entertainment and Fifty Cent. But before Lionsgate bought Stars, and before Fifty, 50 Cent worked that thing for a long time, I give yeah. it to him. So at some point, the deal falls apart because, and this is according to Cuffy, uh, the deal falls apart because Tammy and Demetrius aren't happy with some of the particulars, and there was a finder's fee in it, and a, obviously a production credit for uh, Cuffy, but the whole thing goes up in smoke. At Do the you same, think there was like a I wonder what the dynamic because uh, I like I said I recorded a call with Cuffy on the phone. I no. didn't want to use part of it because uh, I would. I think we both talked to Cuffy to in 2018. Said, he said some things that he might have that a federal prosecutor might have held against him. I'll just say that. So, but but so I didn't use it. But uh, Cuffy's a guy who's been convicted twice now of running his own big organization. Very intelligent guy, strong personality. You know, I can imagine him not wanting to, or in the dynamic between him and Meech of it not being like, oh, Big Meech is the, you know, let me couch out at well, him. He's, old, he's older than Big Meech. Yeah, so like, I he's bet got there was a personality conflict. Well, no, the point, the, the reason I say that is when, 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 Deani Gatling met Demetrius in 1990. I believe that Cuffy Gatling was moving at a bigger level at that point than Demetrius was. Mm. Um, at least according to what the federal government indicted him for in 1993, it looks like he was yeah. moving, he was moving yeah. some, some, some major weight. Not to say Demetrius wasn't, but, but uh, it, this also coincides timeline-wise with at least Tammy's cooperation. So what we know for sure is that at some point in 2009, Tammy is opened as a DEA informant by none other than Jack Harvey. 2009. Knows, so this is early. When did they get sentenced? 2007? Seven. seven. So Anybody within two years, years of them actually going to prison, Tammy Cowan's and she knows everybody because she knew Blue before they went in. And she knows Meech definitely by 09. No shit. By so, that point, she's been running point for Meech for two, three years. Oh, wow. Okay. Jesus. So and she's she been an informant for 14 years. No, she was in, an informant for eight years. No, but that was 14 years ago. I'm saying it's 2023. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, nine. Jeez. She's opened as an informant in 09. Again, I was still making rap videos. Let's, let's not uh, understate the fact of who opened her. People that know the BMF story. The same story, guy that oversaw the BMF case. Yeah, Jack Harvey 
was the Elliot Ness to Demetrius's Al Capone. I mean, Jack Harvey was the DEA's well, number one. Was he the one, one that was discredited or he retired? No, no. He. I'm going to tell the story of what happened. Uh, Jack Harvey opens her as an informant. And again, this is a big deal because Jack Harvey is the number one DEA agent when it comes to BMF. And we're not positive what Demetrius knows or what, what he doesn't know. Uh, but we do know that when she eventually has to go under oath and take the stand, Tammy Collins admits under oath that the reason that she agreed to start cooperating with Jack Harvey was to get Demetrius a sentence reduction. Um, she is so not that's, on the, that's that's on the record. That's on the record, you know, a, a, according to her own admission under oath. And at this point, she's now, not just, just 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 to be fair to our hometown guy. That doesn't mean he necessarily knew himself. No, it doesn't. Your mom could want to get you out of prison and go down to Oak Park Police and tell them stuff, and you have no knowledge. Right. Okay. And we should be so clear that. She was not getting paid in 2009. For the first two years of her uh, informant status, when she's being operated by Jack Harvey, she is not a paid informant. And Jack, what is the first time she sets something up? She sets the, the up a big, a big money laundering case that ensnared uh, a guy. I think his name was Terry White. His last name was White. It was an and these were guys out of Atlanta? I'm not sure. I can go look through the paperwork. I, I didn't recognize the guy. I put the guy through some uh, through some searches, and I couldn't find any big connections from him. That doesn't mean they don't exist. Um, so so but, we don't know that they were connected to... to right, I don't know. Beach didn't necessarily put her on them or anything. Right, we don't know. Yeah, yeah. We she could have just know. wanted her new whatever they are, or yeah. just she wanted them out to make a movie and did this on her own. Maybe. Okay, so so in 2011, Jack Harvey retires, and when you're being operated by a federal agent that retires, you get just like you would get transferred in a job where you go from one department to another department. Tammy, as a Inform as a confidential informant is transferred from Jack Harvey to another agent named Fred Swoop. And at this point, again, we don't know who was telling who to do what, but we know that at this time, in between 2009 and 2012, this is when. Uh, Demetrius introduces Gatling to Fidel Suarez using Tammy as the introduction point. So he, he says to Tammy, go bring Fidel to St. Louis and introduce Fidel to Cuffy. She went there for a weekend. They went out to dinner, all three of them. And they're kind of off and running in a uh, wholesale cocaine conspiracy. At one point in time... Uh, did, did they do any deals that the feds didn't know about? I, I don't know. I know that there is one... And this is the stuff where... where so I guess how would we know that? Yeah. Right. Well, we know that there was one particular... And I'll get to that in a second. One particular bust. Um, and... Uh, but they had been, they'd been monitoring them for a couple years at that point. I, I, uh, I would. Oh, you mean the Gatling operation? Well, the Gatling Suarez Demetrius Nexus. Uh, oh, okay. I would guess so this that went they, on for a couple years. So, so it doesn't quite sound like, you know, Demetrius and Tammy said, "Hey, set him up with Suarez." They were doing stuff. So maybe, see, this is what informants do. This is why people have a problem with informants. They might be telling the police some stuff, and they might be doing other things that the police don't know about. So it almost well, sounds like Tammy was trying to set up other, or was setting up other people, and actually doing a criminal conspiracy with Gatling 
in Flannery and Suarez. Well, well Co Cuffy insists that Demetrius knew that Tammy was cooperating when she introduced Suarez to him. He From says, I wouldn't, have messed with, I wouldn't have messed with Suarez if Demetrius didn't tell me to mess with Suarez and didn't tell me that everything was on the up and up. Again, take that for what so it's isn't, worth. Isn't, well, right there now, here we have the dilemma. What Cuffy is saying in public is, a, I, I mean, is snitching, I guess, right? No, yeah. But I guess if you got snitch, see, that's where people, regular people, they're sitting in a prison cell doing 30 years, like all of these rules that people think exist. But, here, but here's where it starts to get, I mean, it was shady. Now it gets like, you know, the, the thunderstorm, tornado, typhoon of shade now descends. And that's when Tammy trades up and goes from Fred Swoop as her um, direct content in the DEA to... And wait, and did, and did Fidel Suarez beat another case during this time? Yeah. Okay, so, yeah, this sounds like classic. There's a lot of, yeah, there's a lot of questions of... Um, there's all these cases being made. Yeah, yeah. that's why. And but Suarez you know, catches is, another case during this time and beats it. Yeah. And Tammy begins a romantic relationship with Keith Cromer, who's not a street agent. He is the head of the office. He is the supervisor oh. of the oh, he Atlanta was, was he DEA. The sack? He, was the, he was the sack? Yeah. Of what? The Atlanta field office? Yeah. So, so he was the head. He was in charge of the entire Atlanta field office. And he starts an affair with Tammy. And oh, wow. is on the phone. Boy, or is, is so next to Tammy. These women are... Tammy, Cow, I'd like to know her life story because she sure knows how to slither and snake through, yeah. through life. So at that point, Fred Swoop is like, they circumvent the actual agent that should be operating her. And she's being operated by the supervisor who has no uh, response. You know, the protocol is completely been uh, thwarted and undermined at this point. And they put her on a payroll, which is... Against protocol, uh, she gets on a, a monthly stipend where she, over the next, I think, over two and a half years, she collects a quarter million dollars. And it's, it's against job. Damn, you can't get that type of pay. That's more than the DEA agents probably make. Yeah, yeah. And she, uh, the way it's the way it was in court, the way it was explained that. You get paid if you're a, a cooperator or a confidential source. You get paid per information. So in and April, and they get, sometimes they get a cut of of cash or a and, cut of the bus. Right, right. But so let's say in April 2023, at the end of the month, you've given three pieces of cooperation. Those three pieces of cooperation has, has led to X amount of bus. We're giving million you million dollars. You get a hundred grand. Whatever we're going to give you, we're going to give you something for each three of the bus and a. But if but if in April. You as a as a confidential source don't don't produce any busts. You're not getting paid at the end of the month. So Tammy was taking a boy. It, it, sure, it sure, sure sure seems like that shouldn't be. That's, I mean, I you're sounds literally like laundering money. It sounds like laundering money to me. <laughs> yeah, and not to mention, like, so a law enforcement agent can't entrap somebody, but they can basically get a confidential informant. By giving them financial incentives, seems like to circumvent the anti-entrapment thing. So feds can't come and knock on Scott Bernstein's door and say, hey, do a drug deal, do a drug deal. But Al Profit, the confidential informant, can pressure you into it so I can get my monthly fee or in my bonus. But she was getting paid for months that she wasn't doing any work. So she would collect like twenty five thousand dollars for everyone she didn't even knows. Work this ain't internet gossip. For, Scott has a law degree. Scott looks through the papers. This is all from per official legally binding documents. 
These are all in in like I said, and this didn't anybody just anybody appear. can you go on Pacer a long time. Anybody ago. can go on Pacer and pay and look this stuff and up. read this. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so she's getting paid by the DEA on a monthly. She's sleeping with Keith Cromer, who's running the DEA office, and it's admitted by both of them that all of her conversations with Demetrius over those couple years. Now I shouldn't say all of them. A majority of those conversations that Tammy is having with Demetrius, and they were communicating multiple times a day. Keith Cromer's right next door. I mean, so literally for years, right next door. That, that for years, the head of the Atlanta field office is on phone calls with Demetrius Leonard. Now we on don't know phone, if on phone calls. We don't know if Demetrius who, knew or, We don't know if 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 Mr. Flannery knew or not, but he's there. He's next door. While she's taking the phone calls. Um, so then in 2012, they decide to use Tammy to get Suarez and Gatling uh, in a big 100 kilo uh, shipment case. She has uh, Fidel Suarez calling her. He's got people in St. Louis that have a a truck, a truck there in a like a Walmart shopping uh, mark, uh, and nobody a, a to Walmart, pick up the a Walmart parking lot. There's a there's a semi truck with a hundred kilos in it, and nobody from the Gatling crew is coming to meet them. And there's a flurry of phone calls over the next twenty four to forty eight hours between Demetrius, Tammy. Cuffy and Fidel Suarez, and it's all being monitored. And eventually, Cuffy's people come and get the the semi, and everybody's arrested. So now there's like three years from twelve to fifteen. There are like three years within the Gatling camp. There are three years of like, how the hell did I get set up? In March of 2015, there is paperwork that's filed, put on PACER, that if you were Cuffy or anybody that was working with Cuffy, the description of the confidential, the, the number one confidential informant, star witness in that case, is easily discernible that it's Tammy Cowens. Tammy Cowens, I think it was March 12th, 2012. Or maybe March 5th. Anyway, it was early March 2012. And Tammy, within a couple hours. Well, Tammy, 10 years ago. Right. Within a couple or eight years ago. No, that's 2023. Right. And this was in 15. You said 12. I meant, I said March 12th. I'm sorry. March 12th, 2015. Okay. I apologize. Eight uh, years ago. So that's a, a long time ago. Right. And. Tammy starts getting that same day that it goes up online. Tammy starts getting death threats and starts to flip out. She gets into the car. She's in Atlanta. She gets into the car that day or that evening and drives to see Demetrius in Louisiana at the. Oh, was he at Pollock or something? Yes, I believe he was. Bloody so, Pollock. Like so, like, on February 13th, which is, like, the following day, she visits Demetrius, and there's a conversation between them in the visiting room that's recorded, and Demetrius doesn't seem shocked that Tammy is telling him that she's been outed as an informant and that she's getting threats. His response is, keep my, keep my name out of it. Um, by 2018, there's evidentiary hearings being convened because uh, Cuffey's attorneys have found out this very uh, strange circumstances behind his case. Uh, and this is where I wanted to be clear. And from these evidentiary hearings, a lot is proven and a lot comes out. But one of the things that happens is like I said, ninety percent of that evidence is thrown out of court 
because it was illegally because obtained. Because he was having an affair. Yeah. So, Boy, you know, I wonder, she sounds like such a savvy operator that I wouldn't be surprised if she did that. So she always had an ace in the hole if things went sideways and she had another card to always play on her own and Demetrius's behalf. Because that's the thing. Listen, I've heard people tell stories about having their girl on the outs, get into a seek out prosecutors, get into affairs years later and use it to blackmail their man out of print. Like I've heard of that. And it, if you hear, you know, and at the, so at the evidentiary hearing, Cromer got on the stand and said under oath that he had a conversation with Demetrius um, about cooperation in the Gatling case. And Demetrius was worried about his name being in the paperwork, but wanted to have some assurances that he would get credit uh, and a possible time slice. And Cromer told Demetrius, I will be able to, this is all under oath by Cromer, uh, I will be able to keep your name out of the paperwork if Cuffy does not go to trial. And Cuffy, we have so much evidence on him right now, he's not going to go to trial. So you have nothing to be worried about. And did Cuffy go to trial? No, he pled. Um, and he actually got a, a decent deal. For two murders and a, a big drug traffic, I'm a two murders and a big drug trafficking company. You got 27 years. I mean, it's Boy, not great, man. it's not ideal. What a life! What all of you that think you want to get involved in drugs, or for you, those of you guys that's made a couple bucks and haven't gotten in trouble, stop today because it once you and, get in the web, it's bad. And it should be noted that one of the murders that Gatlin is convicted of was related to the, however you want to connect BMF to what was going on in St. Louis, but it was the murder of a former member of the St. Louis drug conspiracy that had testified against magic against Wani Gatlin. So it was like, it was like a witness. So it, this was a second major drug trafficking case it includes two murders one of the murders is the murdering of a witness and you don't get life in prison i think it's a pretty you'd probably be able to get out in 20 years so you'll be yeah 70. i mean because maybe it was they knew the case had some issues yeah, right. because of yeah 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 wow. so it's this is uh like i said there's a lot of smoke there's a little bit of fire at least after i initially said that to you my 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 first initial reaction is how is this going to affect the show? I mean, part of it is selfish. I've gotten paid a little bit from that show, but uh, I totally, oh, agree, with, try, I totally it's, agree with you. It won't have any effect on it. Man, regular people, it's just something to talk about. Like, because this this is what I'm kind of. Whenever people start trying to talk to me about who snitched and this and that, you know, I point out that. I mean, technically, it's it's bad to sell large amounts of hard drugs and kill people. So yeah. if it was okay for people to be doing that, what are you getting moralistic about that yeah. they tell her? I have no opinion. It's all just human beings being crazy, which is what, what most of us do all the time. But this was the, what, another one of my big takeaways here is this – what it looks like, at least, is this is just Demetrius trying to be slick and being too smart for his own good and call and doing what you know I would term which shadow, is which is typical, for me. typical for people who get in any sort of legal trouble. Uh, like violence is different, be able to do violent things that's different, but whether you're selling drugs, financial fraud, whatever, you know, you're getting over and you think. You you know oh I'm gonna do it a different way, uh you you know you think you're slick that's I mean that's really what yeah, it comes down. If you wanted to, to cooperate, if you wanted to cooperate, then cooperate and get a deal in writing. Nobody saying that you give us this, he, he and you'll wants, get this. He loves his social status, yeah, as the living legend. But you're gonna you're gonna stake that you're gonna stake everything. You're gonna put all your chips in the middle of the table on some woman that you barely know. 
who, by the way, we should mention, is a executive producer of the BMF show. Oh, yeah, she's making... getting paid right now. Well, but yeah. you got to remember, when you're involved in drugs at that level, you're meeting some Mexican who tells you a name. You don't even know if it's his name. And you're supposed to go to a parking lot with a million dollars in a week. Like, it's a gamble. It's I guess I would understand drugs at a casino. It's a casino anyway. I know, but I would make more sense to me if you told me that him and Tammy had been thick as thieves since they were eight years old. But he just met this woman in like 2000. I mean, he might have known her casually, but he didn't get close with her until, you know, the, the late 2000s. And he's yeah, but that was his that was his thing was meeting new. You know, he was Mr. Sociable. Yeah. I mean, that was his whole thing. His, his charisma, like he liked meeting new people, having new friends and. He was able to go from state to state and and make all these relationships and I mean they didn't get they sure went a long time without getting in trouble makes you wonder you know what other yeah. secrets lie in the closet but but again that this was something that if you were paying attention and you had access to Pacer. This is not a secret. That's that's another one of these huge takeaways of mine. It's like this was all sitting before our very eyes for the last eight years. Do you think Mr. Curtis knew about this? <laughs> Fifty cents for the. No, I know who you're talking about. I, I think I'm I'm almost certain. In fact, I'll say I am very certain he knew about it way before the rest yeah, of because lawyer people listen when you're playing on that level like yeah. i've had meetings business meetings with like movie people or rich people and they would have like their security guy there and they'd write my name down and you know i like i have a record and i like and i got the impression before that like i was looked into and they were like yeah, oh he, this guy doing, might he was taking shady. meetings with so family. i'm sure they looked they 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 vet all this stuff and 50 was taking meetings with Gatling. So you can't tell me that 50 wasn't aware when oh, Gatling got Gatling arrested. would have been telling him. Yeah. So, man. So but, Gatling, Gatling's theory is, and I'm not going to chime in on it one way or the other, just going to say what the theory is. His theory is that the, all this cooperation wasn't just for Demetrius to get a time slice, but it was to edge him out of any deal that they were going to make for his life. The TV and film rights. Oh, get make it. Oh, well. Oh, because he would have had a what percentage? He would have had a piece. He would have had a piece of it. Like what percentage? I don't. I don't know. I don't remember what the percentage was. Because two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Listen, go me and he put a two fifty investment into it. Yeah, me, me, me and Scott have been involved in a lot of TV shows and movies that didn't quite get off the ground. When you're getting option for life rights, two fifty is high. The real, the it's really hot. It's going to make, make it, you know, too many obstacles have to be overcome. So he might have owned half of it or some shit for two feet, you know. So, man, but. And it happens to be that the people that he was at the table with are the people that went and made that show. I always tell people, if, if, if people are willing, and I'm not talking about anyone in this case, just in general, criminals are willing to kick your door in and kill you and take the drugs or whatever. Why wouldn't they tell on you? Why wouldn't someone try to set you up to get you out of a, a lucrative TV show? Not saying any of that happened with this, but just for, don't be, don't act so shocked. Like the stuff these guys had to do to get to the level they did in the underworld, you got to do some pretty wild stuff. So why would it have a limit and why would it stop? Yeah, it's just it's 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 a crazy addendum. Does Gatling to have a, a, have a unbelievably going? crazy story. You think, you think Gatling has a lawsuit going about the show? No. I mean, do I think he do I think he is looking Could. to file a lawsuit? Yes. Do I think he has merit? Probably not. Um, because it's, you know, there's, there's, the projects aren't the same. Yes. Again, a lot of things look uh, a little warped, but Lionsgate at that point did not own stars. 50 cent at that point was not, did not have power and was not involved with stars. 
does it look very suspicious that 10 years later, Lionsgate owns stars and 50 is stars? I mean, 50 is like the centerpiece of the, of the stars uh, brand. It, it don't look it don't look good. <laughs> but I don't know legally because of the fact. You now, if 50 cent was was working at stars and Lionsgate owned stars when all those meetings were taking place. Then I think legally Cuffy probably would have some some uh, meat on the bone there, but it just I, I don't I don't know I, I I've seen cases that seemed a lot stronger that that couldn't uh, you know couldn't get over in court. All right, so uh, let's plug your so you can for those who want to you can go over to gangsterreport.com. tremendous website you got to pay to join Scott has thousands. Of really good articles. It's not a repeat. Like me and him do. I do my stuff. And I have a certain style. And I cover certain stuff. And I have plagiarized a few of Scott's stories. Or some of my video things. But not many. And, uh, well, so, and one thing I want. I want overlap, Scott has all type of original. Like So if you're interested in this stuff. You want to read this article. Go to Gangster Report. Pay the fee. More than worth it. And then also you have. Tell them about your podcast. Yeah, it's, a, it's just a buck a week. I was, you know, we, we were free content for about eight years. Um, I, I think, it, you know, for what you're getting, you're getting at least eight, nine stories a week uh, for a dollar. I'm, I'm comfortable with that price point. I think that... Uh, Four dollars wanna... a month. Yeah, Four dollars a month. I want, I want to be very... Um, emphatic in the fact that for whatever reason I was staying out of New York City for a while and kind of leaving New York City to the New York reporters but in the last year I made a decision that I can't be I can't call myself an organized crime reporter or mob reporter and not be you know at the you know in the epicenter in New York City so we I've want been in listen thanks for reporting American dope we want in we're putting we're putting what what Joe Bonanno couldn't do, we're putting it together. Yeah. Boss of bosses. Yep. So, uh, and then the original um, games podcast. So, oh, no, but what's your, what's your podcast called and what's your YouTube channel and where can they hear the podcast? Yeah. So it's original gangsters podcast. We're going to start just like Al with American dope. We're going to start putting out gear, uh, hats, like what I got on right now. And, uh, so original gangsters podcast, you can get it, uh, audio traditionally. On, I remember you know, I, get, I, I get 10% of everything you do, but we'll yeah. talk about that off air. Apple, Spotify, all that. And then we've been on YouTube now uh, for about eight months and we're growing our video audience. Obviously, Al knows I took way too long to jump on YouTube. And, you know, obviously it was it was a uh, once I once I hit the YouTube waters, it, it's been great and I'm growing it. And uh, Original Gangsters uh, podcast on YouTube. Uh, we we we'll drop new some, content every week. Links. Uh, you guys need to go follow Scott. You know, uh, me and him make a good one, two punch. I'm more kind of the history, social, entertainment -y type of philosophical end. He's uh, a reporter. He has a lot of, I don't have anything against federal agents. I mean, but just given my yeah. lifestyle, I mean, I'll talk to him when I interview him, whatever. I don't interact with federal agents, but you have sources and et cetera. Uh, yeah. But you're not anyone who's friends with people that someone might think is a criminal i'm right. saying and I, I will always any, tell people, any criminals but i wouldn't want anyone to think anyone i was friends with was someone to be looked at but so i don't no. talk to federal agents but we and make I a think, good one too much and i think it should be uh said that in my 15 16 years of reporting and developing sources both on the street and in law enforcement that you get lied to a lot more from the people in line in law enforcement. And, uh, you know, there, there's such a thin line between the guys that are, uh, the gangsters and the guys that are chasing the gangsters. Uh, and you learn that every day on this. And I'm not trying to just, I, I got uh, guys that, that are federal agents that I think, think very highly of, but, uh, I I've learned the hard way that you, you need to go right to the source. And if that means going to sit down with an actual criminal to get the story from them, it's a hell of a lot better. And you're going to get a lot more um, veracity in what's being said than just taking the, the government's word for it. Hey, so and let's, let's start doing these more often and I'm going to leave 
people with something to think about. I think what our next one should be. We're not going to say any names right now. But speaking of thin line between, uh, me and you did a documentary when we were starting Detroit Mob Confidential. All the, well, a bunch of the FBI agents we were interviewed are now employed by, let's just say, as PIs by a very interesting Italian-American gentleman. Well, and... Who is not convicted of anything, so we're not going to say anything, but... But I'll I'll also say that, oh, and this is more kind of sociopolitical, but I find it absolutely fascinating that a number of retired FBI agents and DE agents, ATF agents, that I know that I follow on social media are rabid Trumpers. I mean, not just Republicans that voted for Trump, but like MAGA Republicans. And I find that odd. Little the scared is, I mean, well, we could go in there. Maybe maybe that's, yeah, but yet they're getting employed by alleged Italian-American gentlemen. But I'm, I'm not even talking about the Detroit guys. I'm talking about a lot of New oh, York in guys. General. And New York guys, Philly guys, or agents that just are diehard Trumpers. Even and dare now? You, say anything. you mean even, even now? Now, now. Like MAGA Republicans. You mean even after the yes. debacle of his presidency and the attempted yes. coup d'etat yes. of the U.S. government? Yes, they're on their Facebook, and sometimes I'll chime in and be like, you spent 30 years of your life going after mob bosses, and now you've joined a cult of a mob boss? It's All right, on weird. that note, <laughs> my man in Amsterdam, Scott Bernstein, I'll see you next week, my G. Right, I'll be there. All right, buddy. Bye. Peace.